Hey there, welcome to Aphrodite. Happy New Year, happy holidays and all that jazz. As this year started, I've been thinking a lot about the power of words, you know, how a really great piece of writing or poetry or song can really stick with you for your whole life. And I think the same is true with the words we say. And I think what really sparked that thought was this video. What? <laughs> all you all think smoking kills? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Do you know that the amount of people dying from diabetes are three times as many people dying from smoking? Yet if I pulled a snicker bar, nobody will say anything. <laughs> Do you know that the leading cause of lung cancer it's not actually a cigarette. It's your DNA. You could smoke for years and nothing will ever happen to you. This whole war against smoking is just to restrict the farming of tobacco. Mr. Constance Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I use these arguments, even though I just made them up, with a group of my friends. And the results, five of them believed what I said. Two of them started smoking. <laughs> Words, when said and articulated in the right way, can change someone's mind. They can alter someone's belief. You have the power to bring someone from the slums of life and make a successful person out of them or destroy someone's happiness using only your words. Basically, the whole video is about the importance of the spoken word and how the way you deliver what you say can really affect how the other person feels and what they even believe. And I think that is a huge lesson for parents more than anyone. Because we know how important those early years of your life are in forming what you think about yourself and what you think about the world. And if you are getting a certain kind of message coming from the most important person in your life, your parents, you're eventually going to start to believe that message. So I think for 2024, we all have to really think hard about what that overall message we are delivering to our kids are. Is it a fear-based message about how terrible the world is and how scary it is outside of this home? Is it a message about how great and entitled they are and how they deserve the entire world and if things don't go their way that that should sulk about it? Is it a message that they need to work hard to achieve and that's the only way that they can get any self-worth is by, you know, achieving greatness? Or is it a message about kindness and generosity and the fact that their self-worth doesn't come from external factors like how much you earn or how much you own. Something to think about. I mean, if you take the last hundred things you've said directly to your kids, have they been kind of positive, kind of negative, kind of neutral? Where do you think you fit on that spectrum? And I know not everything we say to our kids has to be like inspirational in some way or like life affirming. Asking your kids to pick up their shoes or, hey, do you know where your mom is? Or by the way, have you seen the remote anywhere? Or hey guys, it's time to leave. It's not necessarily going to like alter their entire lives, but I think the tone of how you deliver those hundred messages can affect them. And I'm not sure about you, but I am the kind of person that cannot remember a compliment. Like I'm sure that in the last three months, someone at some point has paid me a compliment. But if you ask me right now to remember one of those moments, I can't. Now, either in those three months, I have not been complimented at all, or there's something about my brain that just refuses to put the compliment in long-term storage. But I will remember every single negative criticism that I've received for my entire life. I think our brains are just kind of geared towards that because negative criticism is like a danger thing that we have to remember so that we don't fall into that trap again, whereas we don't need to be worried about positive feedback and compliments. So it takes a lot longer for compliments and good thoughts and good vibes to get stuck into this old brain than something negative does. So that's why I think the vast majority of things we say to our kids should be positive because it just takes that much extra effort to make sure that the affirming, assuring, positive vibes eventually sink into our brains. 
I actually have a great example of this, actually. There's an episode of the podcast Heavyweight, which is brilliant, by the way. If you want to hear great narrative storytelling, then that is the podcast you should be listening to. But anyway, this podcast is about this man whose father passed away a few years ago and left behind a bunch of telephone recordings. So a bit of backstory, this guy and his dad had a bit of a distant relationship. His dad was described as cold and not very caring. He knew his dad did love him, but his dad never told him. I love you. He never verbally said those words to him. And so that always made this guy feel kind of bad about it. Now his dad and his mother had been divorced for quite a while and the tapes were recordings of telephone conversations that his dad had taped of conversations with him and his mom as well as with the guy and his father together. And in the recordings where the man is calling to check on his son every single day, hey how are you, how was school, how are you feeling, at the end of every single one of those conversations his dad said, hey buddy, I just want you to know, I love you so much. This guy was convinced that his cold and distant dad had never said I love you to him because the overwhelming feeling and message that he received from his father was one of distance and was one of, we keep emotions at our arm's length. Not gonna lie, as a dad, that podcast episode scared the crap out of me because it showed me that you could show your kids how much you care for them 100 times. You could show them how great you think they are 100 times. You could give them all the support they need 100 times. But if you fail to do that 10 times, then that's the stuff that's gonna stick in their brain. And that means as a parent, you can't mess this up. Now, for the last few years, a lot of my videos has been about trying to take pressure off parents, trying to give parents a bit of relief to try and make them feel like they can do this and that it's not the end of the world. But the reality is, when it comes to the way we talk to our kids, words matter. And every word matters. I'm not saying if you slip up and say one bad thing to your kid that you're going to mess them up for a lifetime. I don't think that's true. But I do think we have to think carefully and critically about the messaging that we're giving our kids about the world and more importantly, about themselves. So this year, will you join me in thinking that critically about the good things that you should be saying to your kids? And could you put that in the comments? Like what kind of positive messages do you think we should be giving our kids weekly, daily, monthly, or whenever? And not just in general, give me specifically the kind of sentences that we should be saying to our kids that will make them feel good about themselves, will make them see the world in a more positive way, will make them be ready to take on the challenges that life will throw at them, but ultimately are good, and positive and helpful. I would love to see your examples in the comments below because it'll be really helpful to me. And if it's gonna be helpful to me, I think it'll be helpful to a bunch of other parents as well. I hear the ice cream man ringing a bell outside my house, so I gotta go. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Afro Daddy. I'll see you soon. Afro Daddy out. Yo, what's King Afro Daddy? Hey, that's my dad. <laughs>